guys, thank you very much for joining us, so welcome back. Um, this is the European Law Interview, sponsored by the Jean Monnet Chair, which is part of the European Commission Education and Training Programme. We have the great opportunity today to interview Professor Nicolas de Sadler. He is a professor in EU and Environmental Law at Université Saint-Louis Brussels and uh, Université Catholique de Louvain. Good morning, Professor. Thank you very much for joining us, or rejoining us in this case. Um, today uh, we will uh, further develop uh, our series of interviews on taxes. Um, this interview is uh, devoted to Article 110 of the TFU. So uh, we saw uh, in uh, earlier earlier interviews that member states have a relative freedom to carry out their own um, tax policies unless it is harmonized. So for example, they might uh, define uh, the context. Of course, they cannot discriminate against uh, other producers and products coming from other uh, member states in so doing. So um, if a measure is not a CEE, so not contrary to Article 30, it might still be contrary to uh, Article 110. Uh, Article 110 provides uh, and prohibits uh, member states uh, from imposing on the products of other member states any internal taxation in excess of that imposed uh, directly or indirectly on similar um, domestic products or uh, of such a nature as to afford uh, indirect protection to other products. So uh, Article 110 is often seen as a complement to uh, various treaty provisions, for example Article 30. Um, I imagine that the scope uh, of this provision is quite similar as the one of Article 30. Is it as broad as the uh, scope of ambit of Article 30? Yeah, extremely broad, but uh, as a matter of course different. Uh, of importance is to draw a dividing line between the first and the second paragraph of that provision. Uh, the first paragraph prohibits discrimination between domestic and foreign products that are deemed to be similar, so a strong brown beer uh, with light um, Italian wine. Mm -hmm. uh, the second provision uh, prohibits national taxation aiming at um, of affording uh, protection to other products so that will be uh, these products are not similar uh, but they might compete such as uh, wine might compete with ch champagne uh, given its uh, sheer importance article 110 has been interpreted uh, broadly by the court of justice so as to cover all national uh, procedures which directly or indirectly undermine the equality of treatment between national and domestic products. Um, accordingly, tax imposed on foreign or imported or exported products, as well as uh, taxes on the use of products, are covered by Article 110. What is more, charges are going beyond classical levies such as uh, fees for inspections are also encompassed within the scope of ambit of that provision. Uh, last, uh, it must be noted that Stade Gemeinde Frontlane's judgment is a good case in point. In that case, uh, tax arrangement uh, adopted by the Austrian uh, Environmental Ministry was challenged by economic operators uh, wishing to uh, discard in Austrian landfills polluted soils uh, coming from the commune of Rodigo in Italy. The uh, Austrian authorities argued uh, before the Court of Justice uh, that uh, the charge was imposed on the landfill operator and not on the waste, not on the products. And given that there were no goods, Article 110 as a result could not be applied. The Court of Justice dismissed that argument on the ground that the charge was imposed indirectly on the waste uh, being disposed of in the landfill. Okay, thank you very much for this explanation. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, some measures are a mix of technical and fiscal requirements. So how can we draw a dividing line between Article 34 and Article 35 and then Article 28 and Article 30? 
Yes, uh, well, this is uh, extremely complex questions. Uh, Article 34 is deemed to be a lex generalis, whereas Article 110 is deemed to be a lex uh, specialis. Um, so, as a consequence, um, Article 110 uh, does focus on uh, fiscal uh, issues, whereas all technical uh, all other technical aspects are likely to fall within the scope of ambit of Article 34. Uh, or as a matter of course, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to draw the dividing line between the two provisions. Uh, in addition uh, to this, it must also be noted that uh, Article 30 of the treaty covers charges imposed on foreign or domestic products by reason of the fact that they cross a frontier of one of the member states and they are not deemed to be custom duties in their own rights. So there must be a link uh, with crossing a frontier. Whereas Article 110 is dealing with internal taxation with no relationship whatsoever with a good crossing a frontier. That being said, uh, as we already discussed lately, uh, Article 30 is also likely to cover uh, specific um, indistinguishably applicable taxes to both foreign and national products whenever the revenues of these taxes are um, being streamlined with a view to offsetting the burden borne by the operator producing the tax domestic products. Accordingly, such tax arrangements are uh, reviewed under Article 30 and not under Article 110. Okay, thank you very much. If you don't mind, we're going to go back to a special kind of taxes eco-taxes, so um, the court uh, said that those uh, taxes are autonomous fiscal measures characterized by the uh, their uh, environmental objective and specific tax base. So my next question is the following. If eco-taxes are mo more um, dissuasive than redistributive, should they be um, assimilated to product standards and therefore fall um, within the scope of ambit of Article 34? But the answer uh, to that question is not straightforward. Uh, perhaps one sh should distinguish between two situations. An eco tax uh, that would be tantamount uh, to a product requirement, uh, leaving uh, no other opportunities uh, to the economic operators to pay a very hefty price. Perhaps under such circumstances, uh, one could conclude uh, that such an eco-tax is akin uh, to a measure having an equivalent effect to a quantitative restriction. Uh, however, uh, the vast majority of eco-taxes are not really banning products, they are offering a choice to the economic operators or to the consumers between more heavily taxed polluting products and less tax uh, cleaner products. So all in all, uh, the vast majority of eco-taxes are not likely to ban per se uh, competing products. So my view uh, is that Article 110 uh, should prevail over Article 34. Okay. Thank you very much. Then I have a very uh, specific question. I am referring to the wording of Article 110. So there is this notion of manifestly excessive tax. Is a tax, uh, for example, of 200% of the value of a car uh, in a country where there is no car production? Uh, that doesn't uh, happen in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Is it a manifestly excessive tax? Yeah, your question is indeed extremely relevant. That issue has been addressed so far in two judgments. Firstly, in Commission versus Denmark, the Court of Justice took the view that in the absence of competitive national products, Article 110 uh, did not apply. So the Danish 
um, overtaxation of vehicles, as a matter of fact produced abroad, had to be apprised by reference to Article 34 and not uh, to Article uh, 110. Uh, it must be noted that this is the only case so far where the court alluded the possibility to apply Article 34 instead of Article 110. The second case is Dansk Bill Importer, in which the Advocate General Francis Jacob took the view that a Danish tax amounting uh, to 200% of the value of the car being placed upon the Danish market could exceptionally be assessed under Article 34. However, uh, the Court of Justice found that uh, Article 34 uh, was not uh, applicable to that matter. Uh, accordingly, it appears uh, that Article 110 does not condemn excessive, the excessive character or the uh, what some critics will call the overtaxation um, decided by national authorities. So, um, admittedly, the member states are sovereign in determining the tax basis as well as the tax rates and to pursue um, tax policies that some critics uh, will qualify that uh, somewhat excessive, you know? Okay, thank you very much for this uh, very useful explanation. Uh, we will now go deeper into the analysis of Article 110. So if you don't mind, I'm going to read the first paragraph of this article to make sure that everyone remembers uh, what it is about. So uh, Article uh, 110 reads, No member state shall impose directly or indirectly on the products of other member states any internal taxation of any kind in excess of that imposed directly or indirectly on similar um, domestic products. So uh, the very important word here is similar, so it's important, uh, it's compulsory to have domestic products similar to imported products. And then the second important part uh, of this uh, paragraph is that it prohibits member states from taxing the products of other uh, member states more heavily uh, than similar uh, domestic products. We will focus on the notion of similarity uh, to start. Um, can you please tell me how we can compare uh, products? What are similar products? For example, um, is a recyclable uh, battery similar to a disposable battery? Yeah, um, well, uh, at the outset, the Court of Justice endorsed a rather formal approach. Uh, the Court of Justice uh, focused on the customs or the statistical classification made by public authorities to determine the level of similarity. So that approach was deemed to be uh, somewhat formal. Later on, the Court of Justice endorsed a broader test. Um, the Court of Justice did not focus on the identical nature of the products at issues, but assessed whether these products were similar and uh, comparable uh, as a matter of using them. So the, the question arises as to whether uh, the products at issues are deemed to be interchangeable uh, in the eyes of an average consumer. Uh, so the question arises as to whether uh, the consumer is ready to drop uh, Belgian beer in favor of a cheap uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, you know? Um, well, of course, this, uh, this is a somewhat uh, traditional economic approach to similarity. Well, that uh, analysis has been criticized for being too classical. Uh, nowadays, one must bear in mind that many consumers are more eco-minded, that eco-design, eco-consumption are concepts gathering momentum. And given these trends, 
it's possible uh, to differentiate between um, heavy polluting cars and uh, cars releasing less CO2s. Though the cars uh, perform the same functions uh, to, to drive the consumer to the restaurants or to drop the, the kids at school. So uh, my view is that um, in virtue of Article 11 that require the integration of environmental requirements into other policies, uh, it must be possible to uh, differentiate within one category of products um, heavily polluting products from far less polluting products. And that can be done on a scientific or technical ground. So a good case in bond is the um, eco-label uh, scheme that's regulated by regulation 1980-2000. Uh, um, that regulation is actually um, selecting eco-label products within a category of products according to the environmental performance. In addition, uh, the regulation is also providing consumer with accurate, reliable, and scientifically based information. So this is not peanuts. It just no, no, it's the, the the consumer is informed as to the uh, better quality of uh, the product that has been within a category, an identified category uh, that has received the eco label. So um, let's go back to waste, it's always uh, a bit problematic. So uh, we mentioned the principle of proximity before, so waste has to be treated uh, nearby the production site. Can you please uh, tell me if it's possible to differentiate between domestic polluted land and polluted, polluted land originating uh, from abroad? Well, the, the Court of Justice has been uh, rejecting such an argumentation in an Austrian landfill case uh, the court's view is that it's not possible to differentiate between foreign waste and domestic waste uh, in the light of the principle of self-sufficiency or um, proximity. So, la messe dit, in other words. Okay, thank you. Then let's move to uh, what we call distinctive uh, tax schemes and tax rates. Member states have to use them in order to promote the environment. Um, is it possible for member states to uh, use this differentiated system of taxations and if so, under which conditions? Yeah, in, in as much as they fulfill three conditions. Firstly, the uh, tax arrangement must pursue a legitimate objective and that objective must be in line with the objectives and goals uh, either by the treaty maker uh, drafters or by the EU law makers. So whenever the national objective is consistent with the objectives endorsed, generally speaking, by the uh, European Union, um, the first condition is fulfilled. A second condition requires the member state authorities to base their tax arrangements upon a consistent and objective criteria. So as, um, as far as the environmental uh, tax arrangements are concerned, these criteria um, are likely to be related to the raw materials being used, uh, the energy or the source of the energy being used in the uh, production or manufacturing process, uh, the recyclability or the thresholds of toxicity of the substance being taxed. Thirdly, the uh, member states are called on to avoid by any means any kind of direct or indirect examination in spite of the practical difficulties the national civil servants are likely to encounter in applying the tax arrangement. So three conditions to be fulfilled in order uh, to apply a differentiated uh, tax policy. And as a matter of course, all eco-tax arrangements apply differentiation. Okay, so if you don't mind, we'll go back to the second condition. I have a small uh, example. Um, so for example, if a member state imposes a higher tax on cement 
uh, made with carbon than on salmon made with greener techniques. Uh, there is a, a legitimate objective and it's based on technical criteria. Is it okay to do so? Yes, uh, of course, this is related to the border tax adjustments. Uh, many, many member states are calling uh, for implementing border tax arrangements on the account that the European salmon industry is subject to CO2 taxation, whereas American or Chinese or Indian salmon uh, escape such taxation so far. Um, well, uh, this is quite problematic on the ground that uh, the eco tax is not related to the product in its own right, but to the process according to which salmon uh, has been produced. But um, in line with previous judgments of the Court of Justice, one could conclude uh, that um, the method of processing or manufacturing the cement indirectly uh, impacts upon the product, and that Article 110 uh, is likely to apply to such tax arrangements. It might be quite difficult or even impossible for member states to check whether or not an imported product respected uh, environmental standards or, what, or was produced according to green uh, techniques. So uh, can member states invoke uh, practical difficulties uh, in order not to extend uh, tax relief uh, to imported goods? One has to answer to that question by the negative. Um, oil, a Finnish case on electricity is a good case in point. The Finnish authorities uh, differentiate between two tax arrangements, a flat rate on the electricity imported from Sweden in Finland and a differentiated tax according to the methods that have been used to produce the electricity uh, in Finland. Um, the views of the Finnish authorities, it was impossible to determine the exact origin of the foreign electricity and to apply a differentiate rate according to the methods of production. These technical difficulties were sidelined, were dismissed by the Court of Justice. So by no means the national authorities are allowed or have the possibilities to invoke the technical difficulties they are facing in uh, determining the sources of production. Okay, thank you very much Professor. This was the last uh, question of this interview. So um, this is the end of our series on taxes. Uh, we discussed today uh, Article 110 TFEU. So we saw that it has a quite broad scope of ambit and then we draw a, a dividing line between Article 34, 35 and then 28 and uh, 30. Um, we then went deeply into the analysis of Article 110 and saw that the issue of similarity is very very important. Um, Professor de Sadler gave a concrete explanation of um, the assessment of uh, necessity and then he mentioned uh, the three uh, important uh, conditions. Thank you very much for uh, watching us. See you next time. Bye!